Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting coding interview question video. This time guys, we are going to solve question number 1299 replace elements with greatest element on right side. But before I start with the video guys, just want to request you that if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. Let's get started now. So basically guys this is an easy level array based questions and these types of questions are really common and they are really good practice. Let's uh, jump to the problem statement. We are basically given an array uh, in a variable called as r and we have to replace every single element from the greatest element among the elements to its right side. So obviously you can see that uh, in case of the last element there is no element left on the right side so the last element is replaced with minus one. But uh, in this example, you can see that for instance, 1 is replaced by minus 1, but 6 is replaced by 1 because uh, 1 is the only element which is left to its right side. So that's why 6 is replaced by 1. 4 is replaced by 6 because uh, between 6 and 1, 6 is definitely the greater element. So on the right side of 4, uh, there is only one greatest element, which is 6. So that's why it's uh, changed by 6. And then uh, same with 5 also uh, on the right side of 5 there is only one greatest element which is 6. So 5 is also replaced by 6 and uh, you can see that. Same is in the case of 18. So on the right side of 18 the greatest element is 6. So 18 is replaced by 6. And in case of 70 on its right side you can see that out of 18, 5, 4, 6 and 1 18 is the greatest element. So we replace 17 with 80 okay so that is the problem statement there are few other examples guys but basically they are also uh, pretty straightforward you can see that there is only one element here so that's why it's just represented uh, sorry replaced by negative one the constraints are that the length of the array goes from 1 to 10 to the power 4 and the value of the array goes from 1 to 10 to the power 5 okay so as you can see guys, uh, this is an array level question and we are going to do this with a basic array traversal. Let's jump to the solution part. Now how we are going to uh, traverse uh, the whole array and then replace every element with the greatest element on the right side. Let's just take this example. Okay, first we are going to discuss the approach. So one solution is simply that uh, we go one by one element. So for example, I first take this element. Okay, what we can do is we can do a double for loop. So one for loop goes from 0 to, you know, array length, array length. And then for every single element, we can do another for loop, which goes from i plus 1 because we are doing all the elements to the right side. Okay, so from i plus 1 to array dot length, find out the uh, maximum element, find the max element. And then finally replace the ith element with the max element, right? Now what is the uh, advantage and disadvantage of this approach? The advantage is that this will get our job done, right? This will definitely give us the answer which we need. The disadvantage is that here we are using two for loops, right? So obviously the time complexity increases because we have got two for loops here and the time complexity easily becomes order of n square okay now we want to avoid this time complexity we want to optimize this right so one such uh, way of optimizing is by traversing the element from the right side okay let's see how we can do this so if this is my array right now i know that the last element is definitely going to be replaced by minus one so what i can do is i can just uh, take this last element so let's say, let's, let me delete this approach first. So let's say the last element, which is the, uh, let's say the last element, right? I'm going to put this in a variable called as the max cell, max variable, right? Because if I'm starting from the right side, so far the last element is my maximum element, right? There are no more uh, elements to the right side of the last element. So basically, initially, I would say that the last element is my maximum element, right? Now, just after that, we will uh, 
start from right and go towards the left right so this is the last element and then i will go to let's say last minus one right so last minus one means i am now here right second last element so once i am at the second last element what i am going to do is i am going to assign the second last element to my max value right but before i do this uh, so i will assign my max value to my uh, second last element uh, but before i do this i will just store this uh, second last element value in some temp variable let's say minus 1 and then i will update my max value to this temp variable right i will update this max variable to my temp variable only if this is greater than the original max variable so let's say if my in this case let's say if we if we go in this case the last uh, variable was 1 so definitely that becomes my max variable when I come to 6, here I will assign 1 to the second last position. At the same time, I will check if my max element is greater than uh, the current element or not. And we can see that the max element was 1 and it is now being compared to 6. Obviously, the max element is greater than 6. So, in that case, the new max element will become equals to 6 now. Right? Now, when we go to the from last minus 1 so now when we go to the last minus 2 variable so i am going to assign the last minus 2 which is this 4 value to my temp and the third last which is the last minus 2 variable means my third last element is simply going to be assigned the max variable and what is the current max variable value which is 6 but now should i update my max variable from 6 to the current variable 4 no i should not because until this point so until this index the maximum element which i have encountered so far is not 4 it's actually 6 so the max variable is only updated if that max variable is smaller than the current variable or the temp variable value okay now if I continue to do this further guys, at the end what's going to happen, we are going to end up with this output, okay. So, if I continue to do this, uh, what's going to happen, so if I'm starting from right, let's say I didn't change my last variable, until now I didn't change it. So, 1 remains 1, now my max value is 6, uh, so, so for the last element my max value is 1, so 6 is replaced by 1. Now my max value is 6 and 4 is replaced by 6. So 4 becomes replaced by 6. Now my max value is still 6 at this point. So 5 is also replaced by 6. So 5 is also replaced by 6. And at 5 also my max variable is still 6 because 6 is still greater than 5. So 18 is also replaced by 6. Okay. And now, at the end, my loop is going to break. Okay, so after this, I'm not going to go any further. Because what's going to happen after that is the, 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 these variables, the first variable, the first array index and the last array index, these are our uh, edge cases. Okay, because what's going to happen is that in this case, in our edge case, we have to make sure that they get replaced by the variable which is calculated uh, max on their right side. So, when we are running the for loop, if we run only for these elements, the max variable in the end is going to have the value of my, uh, the maximum rightmost element, right? And let's say in the cases when we have got only one element, let's say in the case when we have got only two elements, right? In these uh, circumstances, we won't be able to achieve our right answer. So, that's why it's better to take these edge cases out of the for loop. And when we are out of the for loop, we are just going to assign the 0th element to my max value, right? And in the end, when we are at 18, that means when we are at the end of the for loop, the max value automatically will get updated to the temp variable 
which is going to be the current value of the index 18 why because 18 is greater than all the other 5 4 6 values right so that's why array 0 is going to get assigned to the uh, last known max value which is the last known max value towards the right side and the last array value is going to be assigned to the minus 1 because that's what we know right now this assigning the last variable to the minus 1 has to be done after when you assign the first variable to the max variable why because in case my array only contains one single value we have to make sure that it gets assigned to minus 1 okay if you do this step after this step what's gonna happen in this scenario when we are you have got 400 your value will become 400 only and not minus 1 so make sure that this step is uh, written after the uh, first step okay okay so now we know the solution approach let's jump to the implementation which is pretty much the same thing which i'm gonna do here so I'm just going to create the max variable and I'm going to assign it to the last variable which is array dot length minus one. Okay. Now I'm just gonna uh, start my for loop which is going to start from the second last element so array dot length minus two and array i greater than zero which means it's gonna end on the second element and not on the first element i minus minus right now. Uh, really simple what we are going to do we are going to store in a temp variable the value of the current uh, index okay and then we are going to make sure that the current index is get assigned to the max variable now if the uh, current index array value is greater than the max uh, variable then we are just going to assign max to the temp finally after this follow the zeroth uh, the first value gets assigned to the max index the max value which got calculated in the end because the max which gets calculated in the end is nothing but the maximum of the entire rightmost array of the first element okay so array zero gets assigned to max and array uh, which is array length minus one gets assigned to negative one and finally you done array let's run this code guys let's see if this works for our uh, our uh, example cases and you can see that it's now accepted for one case and hopefully it will get accepted for other cases as well and there you go okay now let's talk about the time complexity so as i was telling you in the uh, video previously that if you have went with a brute force solution your time complexity would have been order of n square but in this case we are only running a single for loop right so that's why the time complexity is simply order of n now what about the space complexity guys so here we are not using any extra array so the space complexity is order of one because we are not using any extra space okay so that was the solution guys i hope you guys like the solution and i hope your coding practice became a little bit better with this if you did uh, find it informative and helping then please do not forget to like this video and share this video with your friends it would really help uh, you know to increase the views and help me to motivate more such programming videos also guys if you have not yet subscribed to my channel then i would be really grateful if you can subscribe and support me through this education journey uh, thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video until then take care and bye bye